Hello guys, this is Rupesh and watching CVB Nuts video series on C++ and in this video, we'll see this, this pointer in C++ and yeah, we have these points we'll discuss in between. So, let us start this. So, in order to understand this pointer, you need a class, obviously, and let's have this data type, integer, now public, I always forget this, I know that. And this is your parameter. I mean, this is your default constructor. And the parameter is one. Initialize A. And you can create this object B1, which we'll call this default constructor. And another object B2 with some value. Let's make it 10. And that is going to call this one. Okay. So this much you know, I know that. Now, what is this, this pointer? To demonstrate that, Let's have this void get and not get integer and void set method. So get will just simply return x and set will set x. So x is equal to make it a and here we'll get a. Correct? So this is some member functions and here we can call this b2.print. And we'll compile this. Uh oh, what did I do? B two dot print. Oh, I didn't create it print, but still, actually, I'm more habituated with this print thing rather than printing stuff here itself. Okay, let's compile this again. Wow. Okay. Hit this. Got it. Now ten. So you know this much already. I know that. Now, if I tell you that. You can replace your function like this. Instead of writing x here, you can write it like this. This and instead of this x, you can write it like this. So ultimately what I'm telling is you can use something like this in order to access x. And this x is this x. And this x should be a non-static data member then only you can use this okay and this is holding the address of the calling object so here you're calling this object I mean you're calling this get method on this b2 so b2 must be having some address right because you have created b2 here so b2 will be having some address and you're calling this get function on b2 and you're coming here then magically this pointer is pointing this b2 that's why whenever you get the x that x belongs to b2 because there is one b1 object also and b1 is holding its own x so b1 x is different than b2 x so how you get b2 x when you don't write this and this Actually, what happens when you compile your code, compiler will automatically write something like this. Okay. And compiler will only write this for non-static data members because static data members doesn't belong to object. They belong to the class. As you have seen my previous videos, if you have not seen that, go ahead and watch static data member in C++. So we're talking about this one. So this is how when you call some member function using some object, you always deal the data members which belong to the particular object. It never get mixed up. And this is the key of doing that. Whenever you call it, it will magically get this, this pointer and this will be holding the address of the respective object on what this function has been called. So it is obvious now if you have this b2 object address here and you're accessing x then you will be accessing x which belongs to b2 not b1. So this is how your compiler internally achieved this. Okay. And if you want to know more about this let me just give you a hint like if you are writing b2 dot get or something then what compiler does i'm going to change everything now you just don't have to do in your code i'll just give you the example what compiler will be doing here compiler will do something like this base 
get base colon colon get and the address of b2 okay so this will get replaced with this one internally and as you can see you are calling this get which belongs to base it is quite obvious this get is inside base and you are passing this b2's address okay now as you have changed the calling here you have to change this function also so your this get will get converted into something like this let me just copy paste here and now it will be looking like this base pointer const this so compiler will change this function like this function okay so that's how you're getting this address as base pointer constant this pointer is constant pointer to the base it means you cannot change this pointer or in other words b2 is having some address right so b2 is pointing to some address you cannot make b2 to point something else so that's why this constant is placed here but the point is compiler will create it like this and compiler really changes even if you write here this or you keep it blank i mean you just keep it x compiler will check whether this x belongs to the data member part yes it is then it will check is it a non-static member yes it is then compiler will automatically add this pointer here and compiler will automatically change every function not only get this set will also get changed then only you are getting this x which belongs to your object b2 so if you are setting something like b2 dot set maybe now 20 then this function i mean this line will also get replaced with something like this set and here you will have this b2 comma 20 okay yeah this is important point if you have some parameters then how it would look like it is going to look like this your first parameter in almost all the compiler but there is no standard that you have to keep it at the first place only but this is how generally people do i mean this is where the this pointer exists so as you have changed this set you have to change this also so compiler will generate this like this so as i said base pointer constant this comma so this is this one color is different but don't get confused with this okay so this is this only i think you got you got my point right the only thing what i want to clear is you must be having this question in your mind that if i'm calling this function which is set function on b2 then this set function let's just remove the compiler generated stuff let's talk about our stuff and make sure you don't have this one okay so you must be having this question in your mind that b2 have this x and b1 also have some x okay so same function is being called but sometimes this x is treated as b2x and another time if i am calling the same function on b1 then this particular x will be treated as b1's x so how is it happening and this is the magic of doing that okay so you just see this you will get it if you have any doubt you comment i'll be very happy to help you in this case so compiler will generate this kind of function instead of this one and compiler will generate this kind of function instead of this one so even if you write this pointer and x then compiler will see okay you have done my job no problem but you can skip this you can just have x like this but compiler will ultimately add this one here when compiler is generating the function for you okay and this is how you really point to the particular object and the particular data member of that object that's how you get associative x okay so it's pretty clear now how compiler achieve that okay so enough talk so let me just remove all these things otherwise compiler will not compile because compiler will say that hello Rupesh you have done my job and you're not supposed to do that you are a human and we have some rules for you to write the functions and all okay so this is my boundary I can go up to this only now let's read out these points now you know what is this pointer 
this pointer will be pointing to the object's address that's it okay okay i won't repeat this again and again so let's read this this pointer is used to hold the address of current object that is obvious that i explained you so nicely using which we have called the particular member function obviously if you are calling b2 dot set something then this b2's address will go here okay that's how you are getting this x differently so let's look at the next point this pointer is a constant pointer obviously it should be a constant pointer okay and constant pointer means you cannot change this pointer so we were talking about this second point now the third point is this pointer is passed as hidden argument to a non-static member functions yes this is very important if you have static member functions you won't get this pointer inside that okay so static pointers i mean static functions are like this static void print or something so this is static function if you don't know what is static function please go ahead and watch my video which is regarding this and maybe you will get the heading like static functions in c++ so if some function is static you won't get this pointer inside this and one more thing if some function is a friend function then also you will not get this pointer inside that because this pointer is always inside member functions so you have to be a member functions to get this pointer inside you okay so if you're not a member function you cannot have this pointer correct and this is a pointer that's why you are using this arrow operator correct so that was some third point i guess no yeah second point so third point is compiler automatically changes all data member access with this pointer yes so wherever this member is coming inside your function everywhere wherever the x is coming it will get replaced with this pointer okay so it is not passed in static member functions yeah that i already explained you so i think we are done now i hope you like the video don't forget to hit the like button if you did and make sure you subscribe to my channel so whenever i publish any video you will get the notification at the same moment so i'll see you in the next video bye bye